Welcome to Kingdom Talks with PR, where the kingdom is explained in simplicity and power. God bless you as you listen. Praise God. Um, Welcome to Kingdom Talks with PRO. And uh, I'm super excited to welcome you to the third episode um, of this uh, season two titled uh, Spiritual Growth. And um, today we are going to be dealing with, um, uh, you know, as a continuation of uh, spiritual growth, we are going to be looking at God, the pursuit. Um, well, before we proceed into saying further stops, we would begin with prayer. So, Father, we thank you. We bless you. Lord, for this journey thus far, Lord, we ask that even as we look into your word, our depth in you will deepen in the name of Jesus. And we ask that we will bear fruits uh, worthy of meat upward in the name of Jesus. That at the end of the day, our lives shall be glorious. And we shall become the light through the word and the salt to the earth in the name of Jesus. Lord, for everyone that will listen to this podcast, Lord, we ask that their appetite for spiritual things shall increase in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, quickly. Um, how does this relate to spiritual growth? Spiritual growth is only achievable when we understand that it can be attained through the Holy Spirit, through the help of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit we mean here by no man grows spiritually through the ambience of carnality but through the help of the Holy Spirit. And so we are going to be looking at the life of Jesus whom was helped by the Holy Spirit. For instance, the Bible told us in the book of Acts 10 38. Acts 10 38. It says, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. With the Holy Ghost, he was anointed. So if the Holy Ghost did not have a role, then that anointing wouldn't have been an issue. And so we want to consider the life of Jesus because he is the pattern man. All right, so sorry, we are going to be taking a very lengthy scripture, a lengthy reading, and I would want you to follow uh, suit, all right, patiently. We are going to be reading the book of Matthew, chapter 6, from, say, verse 19 through 33. We will stop at 33, just a verse to the end. We could take that also, 34, but... Our focus will begin our focus from verse 19. So I read in the name of Jesus. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where mouth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither mouth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Remember, God, the pursuit, is our topic. 22 says, The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. 
If therefore the light that is in deep in darkness, how great is that darkness? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Take note. Therefore I say unto you, take no thoughts for yourself. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? Behold, the fowls of the air, for they saw but for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bands. Yet your heavenly Father fedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Verse 27. Which of you by taking thoughts can add one cubit unto his tasha? Verse 28. And why take ye thoughts for raiment? Consider the lilies of the feed, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Verse 30, Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the feed, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Verse 31. Therefore, take no thoughts, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith us shall we be clothed? Verse 32. For or, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye therefore, verse 33, our emphasis. He said, but seek ye therefore the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Verse 34 and the last. Take therefore no thoughts for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. May the Lord bless his reading in our heart in the name of Jesus. Now, if you listen closely in verse 24, I would read again. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he would he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. At the same time, I add, what are we saying? God the pursuit. In today's Christianity, nothing takes the attention of a man, I mean, you know, without being gender sensitive. Nothing takes the attention of a man like the issues of money. People go to the market, they do their businesses, they go to their offices, their place of work, you know, their they go about their daily business or, you know, movement just to make sure that ends meet, you know, just to make sure that the bills are paid. These are good. But we have done it to the end that the things that matters the most, you know, have been neglected. Faking things that are secondary for primary and things that are, pri that are primary for secondary. You see, it calls for an awakening for us to come back to ourselves. 
to taking a grip on ourselves. For instance, someone there, you know, might be thinking that I am encouraging lasciviousness and idleness. No, I will bring a balance to what I'm saying. I'm only saying that we have gotten to a point where we are now enshrined in this deception because anything that do not profit us spiritually is deception. Take it or leave it. What we are promoting here is that the consciousness of the Father is the order of the day in our lives perpetually. How many of us do all of this and still remember that there is God in heaven? We are not talking about, you know, we are not talking about that five minutes devotion that you do before rushing out of your house. And that is all. You go about your business. You don't care. You don't even remember any scripture. You know, in that way, you can never attain, you know, you can never grow spiritually in that manner. For instance, last week, we dropped our second uh, episode titled The Weight of Ignorance. So we are talking about, you know, one of the points I, I, I made was, you know, meditating on the word is a way out of ignorance. Now, I do not have to be in church to meditate on scriptures. I do not even necessarily need to be at home to meditate on scriptures. I do not necessarily need my, my Bible or, you know, the Bible contained in your gadget to meditate on scriptures. You know, like Bible told us in our reading, um, can I get where, where, where that was mentioned, okay? Um, it was mentioned here, verse 21, it said, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where is your treasure? We think more about our children more than we think about God. We think more of our businesses more than we think about God. Funny enough, people think more about the church, the ministry, more than they think about God. So you see people going to pray because they want to be anointed, not necessarily because they are walking and walking with the Father. There's a difference between walking for the Father and walking with Him. We know when God was talking to uh, uh, Abraham, is it verse 17, chapter 17 of the book of Genesis now? He said, walk before me and be that word perfect, which is follow me. It is when we follow God, not walking for him. They are two different things. So even in the church today, as ministers, they've gotten to a point where mammo is their driving force. Recently, my I was I was I was having a phone conversation with my spiritual father, and he told me in person that he went to preach for a man of God in quote, you know, bearing the title pastor. And this man said that he had agreed with his, with his wife that they are in ministry to make money, to make a living. To make it and that they can do anything to make it at that point of desperation god is no longer there that was why on one of our episodes uh one of our podcasts we we dealt on um understanding process part one and two a lot of people who didn't go through this process will see ministry as a conglomerate or as a business venture once your motive is wrong, God is not involved. Hallelujah. And so let's come back to our topic. God, the pursuit. So if God is not the pursuit, spiritual growth is unattainable. It is when God is the pursuit, then you are on the path of spiritual growth. Your growth perpetually will be visible. Otherwise, God is not in it. And once God is not in it, then that is growth on the path of carnality. And remember, Bible speaking, it said, a carnal man can never understand the things of the spirit. 
And last week we read the scripture somewhere in one of the uh, uh, Corinthians where we talked about comparing spiritual with spiritual. Spiritual things with spiritual things. You cannot compare spiritual things with carnal things or carnal things with spiritual things. They do not blend. Hallelujah. All right, quickly. There are some stuff I wrote down here. I have some other scriptures, but for the sake of time, I will just want to run through what we have here. The first thing we must understand, you know, about spiritual growth, you know, as it relates to this, the title of this episode, God the Pursuit, is that focus is the price for a glorious existence. Focus is the price for a glorious existence. And now, that is why Bible told us again in Matthew chapter 6 and verse 21. He said, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be. So if your heart is in your business, it shows that that is where your treasure is. But if your heart is in the Lord, then that is where your treasure is. And then we remember reading that for when we lay you know, when we when we lay up treasures in the heavens, he said, one, it is secured, it will not rust, it will not be corrupted. Thieves can't break in to steal. So these are some of the benefits that we must understand about making God our pursuit. So we lay up treasures in heaven where these things cannot be corrupted. Hallelujah. And then number two, Jesus made the desire the desires of the Father, His priority, and that is a secret to greatness in the in the spirit realms. Jesus made the desires of the Father His priority. He was a young man in His, you know, he was a, a, a thirty years old man. Yet, his goal was not the money. His 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 ambition was not to make it, you know, in some what. His drive, everything was to make sure that the kingdom of God is established on earth and in the hearts of men. And he went all out for it. Jesus never pursued self-glory or ambition, but the Father's business. Now, in the book of Luke chapter 2 and verse 49, Luke 2 and verse 49, this was where, you know, um, they went for a feast and the feast had ended. So they were, the family were to return back to, you know, to their homes. They took two days to look for Jesus, only to find him in the company of, you know, elders, both discussing and analyzing scriptures. And then the parents went to meet him and said, we've been looking for you for two days now. What happened? And then he said, why are you looking for me? Paraphrasing. Don't you know that I will be about my father's business? He was sold out completely. That is what it means to, to you know, to make God the pursuit, your pursuit. Hallelujah. And this is how men rise in Christendom. This is how men rise spiritually now the next point i would want us to take note of is whatever you can't let go for god for god's sake is automatically your god whatever you cannot let go for god's sake is automatically your god we make our time for a lot of stuff but we can't make our time for the lord of all this is dangerous and detrimental to your spiritual growth. So we must make God the pursuit. Why am I doing this business? God. Why am I walking? God. Why am I... You know, if it is not connected to kingdom come, then it can never end up in spiritual growth. Okay, I still have a lot of stuff to cover here, so we'll run quickly. Fame never distracted Jesus from his ultimate goal, which is God. Many ministers today pursue self-ambition and self-glorification 
and not conscious of glorifying God. Is God still the pursuit? At some point, we men of God should learn to stop and ask some questions. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Is God still the pursuit? Is God still the reason for this? If not, retrace. Hallelujah. This is how we grow spiritually. Now, the next point here is comfort could be deadly at some point to your spiritual growth as it is a time killer. Jesus still wake up a great while before they to a solitary place to pray with all the things Jesus had done with the fame and the greatness, the anointing, you know, beyond measure, he will still wake up to communicate with his father. That is sense of humility, sense of focus and due diligence. We could see that in the book of Mark chapter 1 and verse 35. A great while before day, he will wake up to a solitary place to pray. Now, the next thing here is, don't allow the deceptive thoughts of your immediate past victories and achievements cause you to plateau at a point of mediocrity. It is said that the greatest enemy of your victory is the immediate past victory. There are many of us today that the thought of our previous, you know, or immediate past victory have made us plateau at a point and never growing again. So you keep making reference to yesterday. My friend, today is another day. Victories can be achieved daily if we decide to remain focused and studious spiritually. Now, let me come back. When Bible told us in the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added. Now, he's not saying do not walk, but he's saying, is God the reason for that walk? Do you have the consciousness of the Father? You know, the, 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 the motive of me of 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 establishing the kingdom through that which you are doing loving on the father perpetually is a way of pursuing or making god the pursuit otherwise you are wrong i pray god will help us in the name of jesus so what is the point the point is in all we do make jesus Make the Almighty God the focus. Make Him the Lord of all. He is not wishing to be the Lord of some in your life, but the Lord of all. That we get to a point where we do not only spend for the kingdom, but we are also be spent for the kingdom. And we are not just only spent for the kingdom, we also spend for the kingdom. This is what it means and it takes to be what? To make God the pursuit. Until all of us cries daily for all of him, there can never be spiritual growth. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. We ask that we would receive wisdom to marry our secular lives and spiritual life diligently in the name of Jesus. That our jobs will not take us away from grace. That our children, our husbands, our families will not take us away from grace in the name of Jesus. We ask that the Lord will polish us and get us ready for a glorious living in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you. See you next week. We believe you have been blessed. As the word says in Psalms 36 verse 9, For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. God's empowering word infused into our life makes us feel free indeed. We would love to hear from you. Contact us to share your testimonies for prayers and counselling. Our details can be found in the description box. God bless you.